Hello, so we start uh, unit 5 and uh, in this video we are going to look at uh, the demand side of the market. So unit 5 is about the market but specifically we want to build the market structure from here and here we'll look at the demand. I'm your host Elias. Let me quickly take you through the outline. So the first thing we'll look at is uh, the law of demand and uh, before going to the law of demand we will define a demand and uh, try to describe its uh, uh, structure and then later on we'll distinguish between demand schedule and demand curve. So we will have to make uh, serious distinctions here between what a schedule is and what we consider a curve in this course. And then we'll uh, conclude by looking at the determinants of demand and the quantity demanded. And at this point, we are going to distinguish between demand and quantity demanded. For further readings, you can uh, look at Mankiw chapter 4 and McConnell chapter 3. Okay, so let's uh, uh, start by defining demand. So demand is the amount of a product that consumers are willing and able to purchase at each of a series of possible prices during a specified period of time. Now you will notice that when we are defining demand, number one, we are looking at a series of prices. Okay, so we have a series of possible prices and we are also looking at a specified period of time, not just at a point in time. Meaning, for us to consider demand, we need to have a series, a different or various amounts of, of uh, uh, prices and then over a specified period of time. If price was to increase tomorrow, how will the consumer behave in terms of purchases of a given product? Is the consumer going to buy more? Or less. Basically, we know that for demand, for a basic demand function or demand curve, we will note that there will be an inverse relationship uh, because the higher the price, the lower the quantity demanded. So, the other thing we'll look at is uh, the willingness and ability, which is uh, part of uh, the demand uh, definition. Okay, so this means that. Demand shows the amount of a product that will be purchased at various possible prices, holding other factors constant. Therefore, we should note two things, two main things that stand out from the definition of demand. Number one is that we are seeing the willingness of consumers to purchase the commodities at various possible prices. So the consumer must be willing to obtain the items. Not only should the consumer be willing, but the consumer should or must also be able to buy those commodities. This means that for demand to be defined, an individual consumer or a group of consumers must be willing and able. If the consumer is willing but has no capacity to pay for the items or is not able to pay for the items, then we will not be able to define his or her demand. In the same way, if the consumer is able to pay for the items but he or she is not willing to get them, we will not be able to define his or her demand. In short, for one's demand to be defined, there must be willingness and ability. Okay, so let's now look at the law of demand which states that other things equal, an increase in a product's uh, price will reduce the quantity of it demanded. And conversely, a decrease in price will cause an increase in the quantity of it demanded. This implies that there is an inverse relationship between the price of a given commodity and its quantity demanded. Okay, so we make uh, an assumption of holding other things equal here or ceteris paribus because demand for a product is not only affected 
by its own price, by the price of that item. It is affected by many other factors that we need to consider in uh, the consideration of what demand is. But all we've done is we've simplified the model when drawing the graph. We are holding all other uh, factors or keeping the influence of other variables constant and then observe the behavior of quantity demanded when price changes. Okay, so we will uh, turn our focus to the uh, determinants of demand after we look at uh, the distinction between the demand schedule and the demand curve. Okay, so let's look at the demand schedule and the demand curve. So with the demand schedule, a schedule is simply a table and therefore a demand schedule is a table showing the total quantities of a good or service that buyers wish to buy at each price. And uh, the uh, demand curve is a graph showing the total quantity or total quantities of a good or service that buyers wish to buy at each price. Now, when we say at each price, it means that we have a series of prices and then we want to consider only a given price. So as we move down the curve, we will be seeing the different amounts of a commodity purchased as prices will be changing. In a, uh, in a visual form, a demand schedule looks like this, where we have prices ranging from 0 to 8, as an example, and the quantity demanded of it uh, reducing from 8,000 down to 0. So when the price is 0, the consumer would want to get 8,000 units. And for uh, the increase in price to 2, the consumer reduces the quantities purchased to 6, Thousand, an increase in price further to four leads the consumer to reducing the quantity demanded to four thousand. And if the prices continues to rise, the prices continue to rise, the quantity demanded will continue to fall. Let's plot this data now, which we have in this schedule on a demand curve, with price on the vertical axis in uh, measured in Zambian quarter and the quantity demanded measured in thousand on the horizontal axis, we can uh, have the price figures and the quantity demanded figures. Now, we note that when price is zero, quantity demanded is 8,000. Price is two, quantity demanded will be 6,000, all the way to when price is eight, quantity demanded uh, will become zero. And these, if we plot them, then our data points will look like that. Joining these points together gives us the demand curve. Hence, the demand curve for a product shows that there is an inverse relationship between the price of a commodity and the quantity demanded of it. The higher the price, the lower the quantity demanded, as uh, postulated by the law of demand. Let's now look at the determinants of demand and the quantity demanded. The first determinant we look at is the on price. Then we also have income. We have the price of related goods. We have the tests for the consumer, the consumer expectations, the number of buyers. Now you should note that uh, these are not the only determinants of demand. Okay, so let's look at uh, on price. Now, the on price of a commodity affects the quantity demanded. Because when drawing the demand curve, we hold other factors constant, then the change in on price will only affect the quantity demanded of it and not the entire demand for a consumer. So we see that from our previous table or, or graph, we see that when price is at 8, quantity demanded will be 0. When price changes to 6, quantity demanded increases to 2,000. And for a further reduction in price, quantity demanded increases. Therefore, the change in price will cause a movement along uh, the demand curve. Okay. So the other determinant is the income. 
Now, the effect of income on the demand of a, for a product differs depending on the nature of the product. Now, in basic uh, uh, maybe thinking, you might think that when income increases, your demand will increase. Well, there are other commodities whereby income increases and you end up reducing the demand for that product. As such, when looking at the effect of income on the demand for a product, we distinguish between normal goods and inferior goods. Let's start by looking at the normal goods and see the effect. Suppose that uh, you consider meat to be a normal good and that uh, there is an increase in your income as a result of that with uh, price on the vertical axis and the quantity demanded on the horizontal axis we note that uh, uh, with our individual demand your increase in income for a normal good will cause the demand for meat to increase and when your demand increases it means that you will be able to buy more units uh, because your purchasing power has increased and as such the demand curve will shift out to the right so for normal goods an increase in income leads to an increase in demand and therefore the demand curve that is the entire demand curve will shift out and to the right if there is a reduction in your income if there is a reduction in your income it means your uh, demand for meat which we've assumed to be our classic example here will reduce and the reduction in your 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 demand will mean that the demand curve will shift down and to the left therefore an increase in income for a normal good increases the demand and a decrease in income for a normal good reduces the demand. Let's uh, look at the effect of uh, inferior goods. Now for inferior goods, inferior goods are goods whose demand reduces when your income increases. Now I will use a uh, carpenter here because if you consider carpenter to be an inferior good, and meat to be a normal good, it means that when you have more money, you will buy more meat than a uh, carpenter. In other words, you will reduce your consumption of carpenter in favor of meat. This means that uh, for a reduction in your income, you will have more incentives to buy uh, an inferior good, which is carpenter. So consider price on the vertical axis and uh, demand on the horizontal axis and uh, that we are, we are facing a reduction in the income of a consumer. And with uh, a classic example of carpenter here, it means that uh, your demand for carpenter will increase because you will not be able to afford meat. Or if you wanted to buy meat, you will not buy as uh, many quantities as you uh, you would have bought if your income was not affected. Therefore, your increase in income, I mean your reduction in income has caused you to shift your purchases and increase the purchases of carpenter, which is an inferior good. Therefore, the demand for the inferior good will increase when uh, income reduces and the demand curve shifts out and to the right. If there is an increase in your income with uh, our initial demand curve D1 and you have experienced an increase in your income, it means this time around you will want to switch your purchases to a more preferred commodity or to a normal good, which is the uh, same meat in our case. If you buy more meat, it means you will reduce your purchases of carpenter. That means that, this means that when your income is high, you will demand less of the inferior good and therefore the demand curve will shift down and to the left. The other determinant that we can look at is uh, the price of related goods. Now, when looking at the effect of the price of related goods, we distinguish between the substitute goods, for example, Mirinda and Fanta, 
as well as uh, the complement goods where we can take the case of bread and butter. Now, let's uh, start by looking at uh, the substitute goods, uh, Mirinda and Fanta. Suppose that uh, the price, the price, uh, the Fanta price has gone up. It means that the quantity demanded uh, for Fanta holding other factors constant and following the law of demand, the quantity demanded for Fanta will reduce. Because the higher the price, the lower the quantity demanded. So if the price of Fanta goes up, as a consumer, you will reduce your quantity demanded for Fanta. Which means that if the price of Mirinda is held constant and because Mirinda is a substitute good, you will buy more of Mirinda. This means that the demand for Mirinda will increase as a result of the increase in the price of Fanta. In other words, there is a direct relationship between the quantity demanded of a given good and the price of its substitute good. Graphically, with price on the vertical axis and the quantity demanded on the horizontal axis and our initial demand curve D1, an increase in the price of Fanta will increase the demand for Mirinda and therefore the demand curve for Mirinda will shift out and to the right. Conversely, the decrease in the demand for, I mean, in the price for Fanta will cause the quantity demanded of Fanta to increase. And as a result, we will notice that people will start shifting away from Mirinda to buying more of Fanta. So this means that the, in, the, the reduction in the price of Fanta has caused a, a decrease in the demand for Mirinda. And with our initial demand curve D1 then, a decrease in the demand for Mirinda will be di displayed by a shift uh, in the demand curve down and to the left. Okay, so the other determinant that we'll look at is the test. So a favorable change in consumers' tastes or preferences for a product means that more of it will be demanded at each price. This is because this is this means that a change uh, which is favorable to the consumer will cause the demand to increase, and the change which is less favorable will cause the demand to reduce. So consider, say, uh, maybe the invention of uh, the introduction of uh, new phones, for example, and the consumer develops uh, in, uh, a high test for such a product. It means that with price on the vertical axis and quantity demanded on the horizontal axis and our initial demand curve D1, the increase in tests for a product will cause the consumer to demand more of it. And therefore, the demand curve will shift out and to the right to D2. If the consumer, on the other hand, loses interest in a given commodity, maybe because it, ha it has uh, gone out of fashion, it means that then the demand for the consumer will shift down and to the left. Because demand for it will reduce and the consumer will shift interest to other commodities. We also have uh, expectation as uh, the determinant of uh, demand. Now with expectations, your expectations about the future may affect your demand for a good or service today. Suppose you expect that the price of uh, say Fanta, uh, maybe let's say the price of uh, Minimil will increase uh, tomorrow you are likely to buy more today to avoid the high price which will be put tomorrow. Therefore, because the price of a commodity will increase tomorrow, your behavior is to demand more today and therefore the demand curve will increase. Which means that your demand curve will shift to the right because your, uh, your demand has increased. So graphically, with our initial demand curve D1, 
because you expect the price of mini meal to be high tomorrow today your demand for mini meal will be high and therefore the demand curve will shift out and to the right and if you expect the price of mini meal to reduce tomorrow it means that your demand today will reduce because you would want to buy a commodity at a cheaper price tomorrow and therefore the demand curve will shift down and to the left today now i like looking at uh, this uh, classic case where you have to you want to go and buy commodities which will be on promotion uh, tomorrow think about the situation that you go through suppose shoprite announced that uh, we are not uh, we are going to reduce the prices uh, of a given commodity on black friday People today, their behavior will be that they will reduce the purchases or the demand for those items and then on the Black Friday, they will buy more of it. And I'm sure you have witnessed the stampede that you uh, will be at the ShopRite entrance uh, doors. This is because uh, consumers are rational and therefore they want to get the best out of whatever resources they have. Lastly, let's look at uh, the if uh, the one uh, last determinant, which is the number of buyers. So the number of buyers, if we have an increase in the new bets, for example, of uh, say new bets uh, for bo uh, newly born babies, it means that the demand for diapers, baby lotion, and under five uh, clinic services will increase. And therefore, it means that because we have new, uh, new babies, the buyers, who are the mothers, will be more. And therefore, because the number of buyers has increased, the demand for a product will also increase. Graphically, with our initial demand curve D1, if we have an increase in the number of buyers, the demand for a product increases, and therefore, the demand curve shifts out and to the right. And for a decrease in the number of buyers with our demand curve D1, the demand curve will shift down and to the left. Okay, so that is it about uh, the determinants of demand. Let's now look at uh, the demand function. Now, we note that demand for a product is a function of its own price, the price of related goods, the income of consumers, the test, the population, the expectation, and other factors, including the uh, own price. So now, the, now, when we want to plot the demand uh, uh, curve, we will have the own price as the only determinant of demand. Now, when we bring this on a function to include all these, it means that then quantity demanded will be a function of uh, these factors that we've denoted here. Now, this tells you that when we are plotting the demand curve then, we hold all these other factors constant. We keep them constant and only focus on the effect of price on the quantity demanded. And that means that then our quantity demanded becomes the function of price. So the demand curve is drawn by holding all other factors constant and only focus on the effect of price. Okay, so let's now look at uh, the market. Uh, that's the market demand. So the market is made up of several consumers and uh, these consumers have different preferences, have different income levels, have different tastes and so on. Therefore, it means that if we assume only two households, that is household A and household B, and that uh, we want to see their effect or their behavior on the market with uh, the item, let's assume that uh, individual A demands three units when the price is four and uh, four units when the price is three and the consumer, I mean household B, demands four units when the price is four and the six units when the price is three, then the market demand will be the horizontal summation 
of these individual household demands. That means in the market, at a price of four, the market uh, quantity demanded will be seven, which will be three plus four. And when the price reduces to three, the market demand increases to 10, which is a four for household A and six for household uh, B. Therefore, the market demand is simply the horizontal summation of individual demands. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. If you have questions, please send an email to muawuelias at gmail.com. I will see you in the next session where we will look at the supply side of the market. Bye-bye.